Welcome to Live in the Loam, KDRT, which is a uh, portion of Davis Media. And uh, you're here today with uh, a special guest, Hans Eberbach. And Hans is in a band uh, locally called uh, Hans and the Hot Mess. Hans Eberbach has released one self-titled album on Columbia, Sony, with a band called Sweet Vine, one album called So Much Trouble, with a band called The Nibblers, and a solo album as Hans entitled Up Is The Only Way Out. He has also released a self-titled EP with Joy and Madness, and currently Hans is working on a new album with Hans in the Hot Mess. Hans, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. You're more than welcome. <clears throat> so we've got a whole hour together. What are we going to do? <sighs> something fun. Something it's going to be good times. We're going to ask you to play something, but uh, before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about Hunts. You, sure. you mentioned before you were born in Sacramento, but you weren't raised here. No. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force, met my mom uh, here in Sac, and then about six weeks after I was born, we went straight to Germany. Uh, okay. A little town near Wiesbaden. In Mainz, where my dad was stationed, I was there until I was almost five and uh, learned the language and then came back here. And long story short, we ended up in, after two or three different states, uh, yeah. ended up in Maine okay. from, a, from second grade until I graduated from high school. In a little, t little tiny town in Maine called Dover Foxcroft. Shout out to Dover. Uh, and and about did, 5, did people. you play music in the high school there? I did. Uh, I was doing... so. It really, I grew up in church playing music. My dad played guitar, uh, and we did a lot of, uh, we grew up in this really, you know, hardcore Pentecostal church with okay. speaking in tongues and, you know, dancing around in the aisles, the whole deal. And um, I got to, you know, start playing a lot of music then. My dad was into music. We listened to a lot of the Beatles and Bob Dylan okay. at the time. Right. Got turned on. But it wasn't until my sophomore year in high school, between my sophomore and junior year in high school, I took a year off school and went back to Germany where we had lived oh. and um, lived with the winemakers there. And, and um, uh, Is that a name or actual winemakers? Uh, a family name or? No, 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 that's a good question because yeah. the family I lived with was called the Singer Fishers. So <laughs> okay. yeah, it's, it's entirely possible they could have been called the winemakers. Right. But, uh, but so they actually made wine. That was their profession, yeah. And um, they've done, done really well even in the years since I left. But. Um, I had a, I was in a band uh, yeah. there. That was the first time okay. I was in a rock band and learned some Rolling Stones. And you were the and American. I was so the, yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, I came back and uh, I knew that was kind of what I was going to start focusing on. Um, had a friend in that little town that actually had a really good recording studio for, especially for the times, and would let me go in and just do kind of whatever I wanted. Right. And I started recording songs and right. trying in earnest Very good. to do something real. So how would you, uh, and you've been in several bands since the 90s, mm -hmm. how would you define your music? Um, there's definitely, uh, uh, it's based in kind of a soul. Um, a lot of times when I, when I first came out here and I was 19 or 20 years old and I was playing in, out for the first time, I was playing with a, p a blues piano player. Um, I never grew up listening to the blues. I just grew up listening to 80s pop radio and, and that sort of thing. Um, but for some reason, my voice kind of took to that that kind of music okay. and people told me, oh, you've got a really bluesy voice before I even really knew what that yeah, meant, yeah. you know. Um, so everything I do is kind of, I think, based in kind of roots and, and, and soul, but I really dig uh, a lot of electronic music and stuff too, because I did come of age in the 80s. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a mix of synth juice and organic roots. You know, your voice, uh, many artists as they age, and I'm thinking of like Dylan mm -hmm. and Johnny Cash and people like that, their voices, they age, almost added a, uh, a level of, uh, I don't know if it's sophistication, I, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Kind of a weathered Yeah, you world. know, and you pay more attention to Weary. these people. Mm -hmm. You have that at a relatively young age, <laughs> right? <laughs> so are you, are you older than you look? Or I'm 44. Or is it just your voice? No, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm No, I'm talking these my people in their 70s, you know, yeah, yeah. they have that. Yeah, I, you know, um, part of it might be the fact that I did actually injure uh, myself over the summer. I, I found out I, I had ruptured my vocal cords, uh, some blood vessels in my vocal cords. Right. And um, just now, uh, yeah, it was just now, uh, you know, going to the, I went to the vocal coach before, you know, before we, I came here. And right. I'm just getting kind of rehabbed now okay. with that. So hopefully Good. that'll be a 
complete trip well, back to recovery. Well, before we go on, can we ask you to, to sing something? Let's do it. All righty. What, what it. are you going to sing? Uh, this song's called Can't Stop Loving You. Okay. And um, for a long time, I was inspired by uh, pain and uh, frustration in relationships to write music. And I think once you crest 40, you start getting a little softer and uh, you move <laughs> on to the love songs. And that's what I've done. Are you married, you. by the way? Or yes. You yes. are. Okay. Children? Been, yes, you do have yep. children. I saw them uh, going down a river on your road. Well, that was one of them, yeah. the girl. Um, I've got a 10-year-old girl named Liera and an a 8-year-old boy named Eli. And uh, I've been with my wife for 20 years. Wow. Crazy. Craziness. Thank you. Already, and so, the song's name again is? Can't Stop Loving You. Can't and that Stop is Loving in, You. That's actually on that, that on record. On the CD. I was just sitting here, getting in my own way, watching Babylon just fry. Wondering when I make that change, the better. Funny how the time just flies. You give me reason to write songs. Call me in the center of a storm. Ooh, you leave me naked like a kick drum. Can't stop loving you, loving you, loving you, baby. Can't stop loving you, loving you. Loving you, set the loving you. Well, I'm well, well. Uh, baby, when you found me, put your arms around me, got me back to what I know. Even when I lose my mind for a minute, you never give me told you so. You give me a reason to get found, lost in the center of a sound. Oh, then you show me how you get down. Ooh, ooh. Can't stop loving you, loving you, loving you, baby. Can't stop loving you, loving you. Loving you, loving you, loving you, yeah, 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 oh, I'm singing, oh, you walk to the room real slow, and I don't say much because I know right where it's gonna go, I can't even try to look you in the eye When you're standing with your candle burning bright I know you're gonna love me all night Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah woo -hoo, woo -hoo, yeah, yeah, yeah la 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 Can't stop loving you, loving you, loving you, girl. Can't stop loving you, loving you. Can't stop loving you, loving you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So that was Can't Stop Loving You, and it's on your CD, Up is the Only Way Out. That's it. And that's a beautiful CD. Did you draw this, or how did this come about? That was kind of a joint effort. It was uh, actually put together originally by my um, cousin, Matt Rollins. He's uh, got a graphic design firm in downtown Sacramento called uh, Lunia Blue Graphics. Okay. This originally had a slightly different cover where this... 
this image yeah, was. If we can get a close up of that uh, CD cover here. It was a little smaller, awesome. and I, I kind of uh, I redrew this stuff here and this stuff here, and yeah, then uh, added two songs to the to the reprint. So very cool. It's kind of a little bonus if you buy the new one. Yeah, alrighty. Okay, so uh, you know when I saw you performing, you have the whole package. Not only is your song wonderful and your voice is great, but you got the look. <laughs> huh? You got the look. That's good to hear, Have man. Have you work on that? I know. I was in Los Angeles. You stand in the, in the mirror and do no, your thing? No, no, no. I don't have time, man. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles with, uh, in 2001, right before 9-11. Uh, we moved right by LAX. And, and I was 31 and telling people I was 28 because uh, I looked a little younger. And even then, at 28, yeah. people in the industry were going, mm, well, <laughs> good. Good luck with that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa. Like, really? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. So oh, I was there no. for about two years. You're, you're a young 34. That's what you said. Oh, you yeah, were. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come on here how, like, how every do you, week. How do you feel you, you personally, how you contribute to the music scene? You know, uh, it's a good time for me right now. I, uh, you know, I was in that, that first band, uh, and we, we got signed, and we're going to be the next you know, big thing in Sacramento. And um, I just, uh, when that all fell apart, I actually kind of went through a stage where I just wasn't uh, even sure if I had anything to contribute, you know? Okay. I felt like uh, to yesterday's leftovers, I uh, felt very out of place in the market that was coming up at the time mm -hmm. in the early 2000s and stuff. You were seeing uh, Britney Spears emerging and all the boy bands and stuff. So um, coming to this place now, uh, five years ago, I quit my day job. I was working for the sheriff's department in the jail in downtown until I was about to jump off a bridge. Um, being in this place now, I do feel a, a, a contribution to, to the scene. And I feel um, that this, these things I did in the 90s, which I thought nobody would care about anymore, right. um, have come back. And there's a legacy there to some extent in a very small town level that, um, that serves me well now. And as I get out and play now, there's this amazing scene in Sacramento happening. A lot of other cities are talking about it. It's very vibrant. There's a lot of youthful energy happening. Right, right. And a lot of diversity in the music. You have guys like uh, you know, James Cavern, bands like you know, Saint Solitaire. We've got uh, Sandra Dolores, who's running a, a, an open mic. A lot of strong women in our scene, making a lot of really great music. And um, I feel like I've come to a place now where I have this history, but I also, uh, I'm almost to this elder statesman sort of yeah. role uh, to these guys in their 20s Very and stuff. Cool. And, it's and remember, folks, I'm reading these, and it's December 12th. So this show is going to be repeated several times in the coming week. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, Hans, do you have a hankering? A hankering? Yeah, a hankering. Often. 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 Probably well, too much. If you have say. a hankering to sit in a big red chair, okay, <laughs> that graces the KDRT studio in the radio studio, uh, we can help you. Thank We're God. We're always looking for DJs. And uh, all you need to do is just uh, go online, uh, go to kdrt.org, and uh, let us know what you're interested in. We'll get you set up with the right people, and you can become a DJ. We'll train you. So that's the hankering part. I think there's an episode of Portlandia that uh, talks about DJs. I should probably check oh, really? out first. I yeah. should check that out. Okay. Davisville is an interview show about people, issues, events involving the community of Davis. Longtime journalist Bill Buchanan talks with local folks Monday afternoons at 5.30, Wednesdays at 8.30, Sundays at midnight, and Saturdays at 7.30. And that show is awesome because he has some guests on there that... Uh, really explain uh, whatever issues they're involved in. So that's a good one. And I think they got your mic fixed up, so we'll go back to our regular <laughs> scheduled regular program. Sch scheduled program, and uh, we'll take it from there. So you were saying that you felt you contribute to the music scene and, uh, and how. Why is it that Sacramento is all of a sudden just bubbling with bands? And singers. Um, you know, I think part of it obviously is, I, uh, I think it's a number of things. I think on a, on a mass level, on, on a kind of a larger level, the whole, for better or for worse, the, the American Idols and the America's Got Talents and the things like this right. are, 
are making people pursue music, you know, some might say for the wrong reasons, right. but whatever. The point is that they're making kid, kids are getting into music. Right. I think a lot of music video games have spurred kids on to, to, to start playing music. But locally, we have a lot more clubs opening up than we did, uh, um, you know, in the 90s. Beer is twice the price it was, yeah. but there are more places yeah, to yeah. buy it and drink it. Um, and then I just, I think the population growth in Sacramento and then I mentioned James Cavern earlier, and there's been a few other people I think that have been instrumental in actually creating a scene. Okay. And you know, you have almost every night of the week now in downtown Sacramento, you have an open mic that's actually a really vibrant yeah. uh, platform for really good artists yeah. and not just a bunch of kind of hand-me-downs that you, can't play uh, normal shows. You mentioned uh, people getting into the business for either the right or wrong reason. I listened to an interview from Mary folk singer, soul singer, I forget her last name now, and she said she's in the business because she needs to express her soul. Yeah. And she said if you're in the business to make money, it'll show in your music and it'll never happen. Yeah, well, unless you have a lot you of know? money behind that, yeah. You I know? guess it, you, there's a lot of banal, I mean, Nickelback's, has, Nickelback's sold millions and millions of records, you know, right. and uh, uh, you've got a lot of rap music that's just obviously constructed just to make that dollar and get out of there quick and right. buy that Cadillac and you know roll down the road. <laughs> but um, I think it does show. I just yeah. think that there's a lot of people that just generally will buy what's in front of them if right. they don't have that yeah. in them to seek things out. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Uh, business, about the business of music. The 90s is certainly different than the 60s and mm -hmm. the 90s is very different from today. What? Yeah. And you were you were signed with Columbia Sony, right, mm -hmm. in the '90s. So, how would you say that experience relates to what people are going through today that want to uh, produce think that, their records? You know, I, I make the joke about American Idol and stuff like that. People going to music for the wrong reasons. Uh, for one thing, I'm not really that elitist. I just think anything that spurs people on to play music is probably uh, you know a good thing. Right. But. Um, uh, that said, I think kids are coming into the new era of music not thinking about, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars. I think they're still thinking, oh, I'm going to be famous, whether right. it's YouTube famous or Vine famous right. or whatever it is. But they're not expecting to make millions of dollars. And um, the access to, uh, to gear, uh, that's another thing, actually, uh, for the last question, too. The access to cheap gear and the ability for some kid for... By gear, you mean the guitar, a laptop, the amps, you know, a, all a, of a that cheap stuff. guitar, yeah, one yeah, microphone, yeah. a good, a decent preamp, you know, and then, uh, you know, even GarageBand or some of the programs out there, a, a kid with really good ideas can make music and have it right. out there and distribute it immediately, right, you know. Right. On the other hand, you're doing it all on your own, right. you know. Being signed kind of ruined me for a while uh, for the the era, especially as Napster and, and the internet and. All these things were first coming in without the social platforms that were helping us uh, as much. Um, I just was kind of like, "What? Am, I can't, I, I'm supposed to do all this work for <laughs> kids that think water just or the music just comes out of a faucet right, like water right. for free?" Um, with the label, of course, you owe them everything, lock, stock, and barrel. By the right. time you're done, and they own your masters and all that, but they're taking care of literally everything. And it's all about what kind of person you right, are, I guess, right. whatever yeah. is going to appeal to you. But okay. we just drank alcohol and yeah. made music. <laughs> and and made music. You were the artist. You didn't care about the business. No, no. Right. To my detriment. So, so talking about uh, you were the artist, as a kid, when did you discover your voice? That you knew you had a talent, that people were actually interested in hearing what you had to say through a song? I think it really fell into place when I moved to I moved to California, and I started going to, to open mics here. I think Fox and Goose uh, on 10th and uh, R Street had an, the same open mic they're doing right now. They had um, when I started playing out in like 91 or, you know, 92 or whatever. Right. And um, that was when people first started going, hey, you can really sing, you know, nice. and not like, shut up, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, okay, so if someone wanted to look you up, where would they go? You've got a Facebook Thanks page. Thanks for asking. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. I have a website, uh, hansrocks.com. It's just H-A-N-S-R-O-C-K-S.com. I, I, I say that first because, you know, in this digital age, we, we forget, like, 
Facebook, Twitter, all these, these platforms, they own all that stuff. Right. That's not mine. Right. You know? And in fact, you know, you can have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I recently tried to invite people to an event that we put Joy and Madness played at the powerhouse, get this message from Facebook after 93 invites. That's all you can do. Really? We don't want you inviting any more people. You're inviting too many people. And I, this happened to me more than on more than one occasion. I had no idea. I'm like, how am I able to have 5,000 friends, but in not be able to invite like a fifth of them without having yeah. like some kind of issues come up. So the website, hansrocks.com, um, there's a Hans in the Hot Mess Facebook page. Uh, there's a Joy and Madness website, joyandmadness.com, Joy and Madness, you know, Facebook page. And then I'm on Twitter and Instagram as the soul. And I know Hans. from your Facebook page, you can go to any one of your other, uh, or not, uh, Hans Rock's page. Yeah. You can go to Facebook, right. SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, Just go know. to the website, join the mailing list, uh, and then you can jump on there, it. There's Facebook even a weather page, and you do the weather, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only when it's really important. <laughs> when, it, when it becomes very important. Only when there's you, imminent yeah. <laughs> catastrophic danger. Uh, okay, can we, can we uh, ask you to sing one more? Let's do it. Okay. Which song is this going to be? Let's do um, uh, My Soul and My Song. Soul and a Song. Okay, My Soul and a Song. My Soul and, and My Song. So once again, oops, about a girl, I guess. I, I need to find some new subjects <laughs> for music. But um, yeah, My Soul and My Song. She is the one, she's the answer to my prayer I don't even know what I ever did before I saw her coming down the road Looking like a dream and I believe Meeting her was meant to be And by tonight we will dance under stars Singing baby we belong together You're my soul And you're my song Girl forever ooh, ooh, ooh. All I have to do is talk to her But I cannot say a word I've been struck by love ever since I saw her face I taste the color in my dreams she's everything I need and I believe even in eternity we will rise like the sun and we'll find each other baby we belong together you're my soul and you're my song forever. La 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 Baby, we belong together Baby, we belong together Baby, we belong together You're my soul and you're my song Girl forever, oh Done. That's a fun one. Very nicely done. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I want to get back to your little comment about Facebook because th this is very interesting because social media is supposed to be where you connect with your fans. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right? 
And, Facebook, but yeah. from your website, it's hard to figure out who actually sees it and doesn't. So, I mean, Facebook does contribute something. You kind of get a feel for, you know, how people react in that. That's true. You know, that's a good point. I, I mean, I see who opens emails from my from my website to some extent. It doesn't. You can't track all of those. Um, and then, you know, you're. I'm trying to get people to sign up on the mailing list there, so I can. Right. And I send emails out like once every week or two. It's not like okay. a, a constant thing. So, but yeah, Facebook. More and more, um, you know, and it's funny how time goes by and you don't even remember the way things have changed, but it's stripping all of the things that made it useful to me as right. an artist. It's starting to charge you for some of the things that it used to give you before. You used to be able to create groups and send out mass messages to these groups and right. there used to not be advertising and all of that. Um, but it does provide a platform for me to go, like this, this, the videos I put up about the storm, Right. this is... Look at what people are reacting to you right, know, in a right. big way. Yeah, you mentioned the storm video received more hits than a new song video. Oh, God, Any, every time. <laughs> Facebook's the same way. If I get a, an app on my phone that makes it look like I'm bald, um, yeah. you know, and put that up and go, I'm, I, I did this. This is the first time I realized, look, this is a different platform, and you have to kind of use it for what it is. A couple of years ago, I put a picture of, of me bald. Right. And I was like, I've been going bald since I was 30. Right. I'm sick and tired of dealing yeah. with it. I'm just, I'm out, and I'm proud, and, I, and this is me. You know, and people, it, was, it got like 150 likes, which was unheard of for me at that point. It was yeah. insane, dude. And people were like, you go, we support yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you know, hey, guys, here's a brand new song about my dog that just died. And it's a beautiful <laughs> tribute to how much animals improve our lives. And I spent $10,000 making it. Enjoy. Six likes. <laughs> my mom going, it's beautiful, Hans. Beautiful. Did the dog really die, Hans? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> my dog did die a couple years ago. Uh -oh, oh, I'm over oh. it, Peter. I'm a big man. All righty, so you were, you were signed with Sony. And uh, where were you the first time that you turned on the radio, probably on an FM station, yeah. and you heard your song, and you probably, if you were driving, you stopped. I think it was the Carolinas. We, uh, you know, the, the record, because of the sound, and it was kind of a, uh, a record that wore its influences on its sleeve real, really heavily, and those influences were like the Almond Brothers and the Black right. Crows and things like that. Um, as you might expect, it was, you know, popular in the Virginias and the Carolinas right. and, uh, you know, Texas and uh, even Jersey and, you know, Anyway, uh, it was, I think it was in the Carolinas, I think we were heading to a radio station to do an in, in, uh, on-station performance, kind of like this. Right. And in our little 14-passenger van, it smelled like <laughs> beer and flatulence, um, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, heard that it came, this song called Mountainside came on, okay. which was like the lead single, I guess. Um, and it was pretty cool, because that song does have a really definitive opening, these big chords, and as soon as you hear it, you're like, Yeah, oh. you know. Yeah, so it was, uh, we did stop the car and we were dancing around. And <laughs> we're gonna be famous, we're gonna be famous, woo! Wow. Five years later, I'm working at a jail. And, and you're on Live in the Loam. Right. Speaking of that, you're on Live in the Loam, KDRT 95.7 in Davis, California. And uh, I don't think it's raining anymore. No, huh? it, was, it was sunny out And did you I'm know thinking. that, uh, uh, Listening Lyrics, which normally is aired at this time, has a Facebook page also. Oh. And we also are on iTunes. And I don't know about iTunes, we're as a podcast. Oh, cool. I don't know if you have a limit on all these things either. I, it's, uh, but if you go I wouldn't on, think so. If you go on our site, kdrt.org, and go to Listening Lyrics or Live in the Loam, you can hear all of these podcasts. I've liked the page. It was well worth my time. You should do it Really? Too. Wow. Yes. You liked it. I did. <laughs> OK. I even uh, stared at it for a while, kind of uncomfortably. Did, did you ever take music lessons? Mm. I grew up playing uh, in school band and stuff like that. I mean, I yeah. did play. I played trombone. And but I was when in... you're in school band, they teach you to play, right? Or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. took some. I played trombone, so I you know, learned kind of some music theory. And, and uh, I, I took choir and stuff like that. But. Um, not really, like in terms okay. of, I play a little, I mean, I play the guitar marginally, and then I, I play like a little piano. I'm usually able to piece together what I need for a recording. Right. And then in my bands, I stick to either just playing some rhythm guitar or right. just not at all. Yeah, you, okay, so you mentioned bands. Uh, 
How does that work for you when you say, okay, I want to form a band? Is that you meet someone that you kind of gel with and say, let's form a band? But yeah. how, how do you kind of select people and what are you looking for? And, you and know, it's, it's not just the music, it's also how you get along, I would imagine. Absolutely, and, yeah. Yeah. It's all different. Uh, you know, it can happen a lot of different ways, and I've kind of, I'm, I'm so far into it now, it's not really. Uh, I guess I am doing some new things that have required me to hit Craigslist and, and, and seek some people out. But yeah, Craigslist, you know, putting an ad out there, talking about what you're into, you know, you're going to meet some crazies. It's kind of like uh, Match.com or something like that, I imagine. Really? You go to Craigslist? That's kind of surprising. Yeah, sometimes. But, or I just go, you know, locally I know enough people now yeah, that yeah, if exactly. I need something done, I'm, I'm kind of putting the feelers out already. Right, but, right. Um, some things I, I, I wanted to try out that were maybe a different direction and I didn't really know where to go. Okay. I've, I've gone on Craigslist. Okay, so let's say you're, you're the lead guitarist, right? Mm -hmm. Or rhythm guitar? A, a rhythm, yeah. Rhythm, okay. At most. So you're looking for a bass player. What are you looking for? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, so, groove, melod you know, someone melodic, someone with a groove. I, I, um, I'm lucky enough to play with Nixie, my bass player Nixie, who's also the bass player for Joy and Madness. Uh, she brings so much to the table beyond just being super funky on bass. Okay. Um, you know, she's been a huge boon to both bands just because of her personality. And I, I love watching the crowd because you have this group of dudes yeah. that are all just standing there going like, oh, that bass player is totally <laughs> hot, dude. And her husband's playing keyboards next to her, so he's got to like go to the set breaks <laughs> in between sets and listen to these, these guys going like, I really want to ask that bass they, player. They, 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 they've fallen in love during. The oh song. my God! Yeah, she's so, you know she's <laughs> voluptuous, um, you know, but and she's just very very friendly too. But also, you got all these girls that are you know not just especially when you have all ages shows. You've got you know these little girls that are like eight, you know, nine, ten years old. My daughter's yeah. age, and they're going, "Hey, you know, yeah, that's I like her. That's cool. I could do that. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that's, yeah. I love that. You know, uh, last week we were in uh, Woodland, and I saw the One-Eyed Riley Band. Do you uh -huh. know them? Just by name. Uh, their bass player has one arm. Oh, no and, yeah, and he does an exceptional job. What he does is he cranks up his amp mm -hmm. and then just fingers. Touches the notes. Yep. Yeah, just fingers it. And you couldn't tell the difference, really, yeah. except by looking. And then, of course, I had to ask the stupid question. Well, it's called the one-eyed Riley. Is someone in the band really have one eye? You know, because I'm thinking this is getting a little... A to I think that's no, a totally understandable they, question. Yeah, yeah, but no, they didn't. But interesting. Yeah. I, um, so, yeah, putting bands together, it's, uh, it's definitely about personal compatibility. You know, Joy and Madness um, came from a band called The Nibblers that, right. that, and that uh, ended up... Uh, you know, splitting apart because of that sort of thing. Um, it's all, it's been two or three years now, so we're, every, we're all cool now. But at the yeah. time, it was it was quite an acrimonious split. And then it was me, I got booted first, and then um, and then the rest of the band, except for a couple of guys, followed, you know, about about three or four months later. So, so you got booted. How, how did that happen? Did they call no. you, text you? No, we met no. at Pete's Coffee uh, <laughs> oh. by the Safeway on 19th. <laughs> Uh, one of the dudes brought his baby, just in case anything crazy went down, <laughs> I guess. That was what I was assuming, uh, or just no babysitter. But uh, again, dude, you know, it, it's, it's music, and it's, yeah, it, is, yeah. it really is water under the bridge. We're all friends now. Yeah, both, yeah. both bands are continuing. The Nibblers have been uh, playing out and doing a, a great job, too. They have a fantastic new singer and, and uh, drummer. I've, I've listened to uh, some of your music, and, and even now, uh, your music seems to have a spiritual side. Yeah. Definitely. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, I grew up in a, a pretty fundamentalist uh, Pentecostal church right. and uh, in a really small town. Um, and so, you know, I was de definitely deeply entrenched uh, in that culture. Uh, and I, especially as a kid growing up, felt a very vibrant connection to God or that, uh, you know, that spirit force, um, you know, that uh, that is out there. Um, and uh, coming to California, of course, you know, and get uh, seeing more cultures and, and getting right. a little older, a lot of the things that were kind of particular to that church, I call their, the, the, the churchianity, you know, the, that kind of things they believed I, I have had to shed as I grow right. older and, and obviously meter horizons expand. But um, I think now more than ever, um, 
people really need to seek um, that source. And for me, uh, even now, I think uh, for me, Christ uh, is the figurehead for that. I yeah. think he's kind of the culmination of all the things I want to try to be as a spiritual being. Right. I think Buddha, you know, uh, yeah, dude, all of these pursuits that, that, are, that, are, that are seeking love and balance. Right. And um, I think they're all worthwhile things. I think there's wisdom to be found you know, in all of these And do you, when places. you're writing a song, do you think about that or does that just evolve and come out naturally? Uh, I think about it in the sense that I never want to approach a song with a uh, kind of a preachy or a political right. kind of vibe. So I have a song called Love and Change where, you know, uh, I talk about, um, it was, that was inspired by uh, Bush, uh, the last President Bush during uh, after 9/11 right. uh, had him. He had, they, but some quote was attributed to him that was something along the lines of, "They hate us because of our freedom. The terrorists right. hate us because we're free," right. or, or something like yeah. that, which just was ludicrous, you know, yeah. to me. Uh, and I I wanted to write a song about walking a mile in someone else's shoes that people aren't just born yeah. crazy because yeah. they're. Can Can you sing that for us? Um, you know, I'm, I haven't. I'm, um, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah, you know what? I, I could give that. I, as soon as I mentioned that. it, I was like, I, "Yeah, maybe I, I should know. talk about this yeah, song. I, I haven't played it I forever. It, I should never have done that." But if you no, can, right, yeah. would you? Yeah, I'll give it a whirl, and it, okay. it's live TV, so it's like it's, eh, I don't care. You, if it's, we're we're on the air right now. You won't know any better if it's uh, if I botch it a little no, bit. No, no, no. You know, then you just go with your um ahs and whatever you do. Right. La la la. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so that song is like a really good example. And then this song, "Forget What You Know," that I was playing earlier, it also uh, that line, "Science can't explain words they cannot hear," you know, uh, is a good example. Science I, can't explain words that they cannot hear. Okay. Very um, nice. Because that song it was directly born from. Um, a cousin of mine who passed a few months ago from lung cancer, okay. uh, 28 years old, never smoked in his life, but he had an incredibly strong faith. And um, he was very much, he was, you know, because of his youth, he was very much in social media. His name was Sean Trank. And uh, he lived that whole experience out online. Okay. And many of my friends who are not religious in any way um, saw what he went through and, yeah. and were like, inspired by him him and his and his, his example and the way he died he died so amazingly well if you can say that yeah yeah um that they really uh it it turned something on in them to just a light you know nice. and uh i was praying for a miracle basically the last two weeks before he died yeah and um it's not always about that but uh that's where that that line came from okay. you know i i I have. I feel bad for people that f that that feel completely alone in the universe. Right. Like that. There's just literally absolutely nothing out right. there, and that we just magically appeared on Earth just from dust and elements, and you and know explosions, and yeah. you know it all just here we are with these Three hands that do these amazing dimensions. things and laughter and love, <laughs> and that all came from. I feel bad, you know. So I, I. But at the same time, like I said, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a. Bible thumper, I'm not gonna be knocking on your yeah, door, yeah. man. I just want people to have that sense of love and comfort and acceptance and a vibrant living. And I've You sound like the Beatles now. Yeah. <laughs> right, good. That's where it all comes Hit from. Get your guitar. Let's right hear on. that song. It all Perfect. started with the Beatles for me. And again, the name of the song is Love and Change. Love and Change. So that's supposedly the uh, title of the next the next EP. It's the title song, and I'm like reluctant to play it. It's oh, funny. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess. What if you were born in the center of a storm where the lightning was the norm? Would it get to you, maybe? What if you were left without a purpose or a bed? No one to hold your head to keep from going crazy. What if what we've traded for gold is the light to know? What could have caused such a curious, blinded and furious rage?
What if what you know is a lie that you've been told? A story that they sold you to keep from feeling lonely. What if what you knew was suddenly untrue? Like a cancer coming through defiant and unholy. Heaven's holding caught up above and we're waiting below. Keeping our fingers crossed, bracing, knowing that we're facing change. you're waiting to know isn't even about who's right or wrong but how a heart can change love can change your heart singing love and change love can change your heart love love and change love can change your heart Singing love, love, love and change. I sense a little Cat Stevens there. Oh, yeah, I love huh? Cat Stevens, yeah. Huh? Yep. You okay. Know it. Uh, just to talk a little about what's going on in Davis, uh, I try to... Uh, say a few words about uh, some of the people that support us. Woodstock Pizza Saturdays has a uh, live open mic. I don't know who's going to be there on Saturday, but uh, you can bet your boots it's someone good. He usually does. Rowan McGuire, who we've had on the show here, is going to be at Armadillo's December 20th at 8 a.m. And Rowan is an exceptional uh, young man. He's studying to be a uh, uh, architect for outdoor uh, seating and all that, oh, landscaping. Yeah, yeah, so perfect. And then tonight, and we're talking December 12th, we're going to have uh, at the wardrobe at, EC, at uh, the East Street Plaza, uh, there'll be a female singer. I'm not sure who it is from 7 to 8, and then from 8 to 9, a fellow that uh, made his own piano uh, out of wood, he's going to be performing there. Oh, so it. there's all sorts of things going on, and then your regular places. So uh, where are you going to be performing next? You know what? We uh, I'm kind of excited, uh, actually. We're doing uh, Lagunitas Beer uh, is having their Christmas party tomorrow in Petaluma, and Joanne Madness is playing that party and spending the night. And wow. It's going to be fun. In Petaluma. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Petaluma, uh, what, where did you crazy. say this was again? I don't know if I know that venue. Pet and I know Petaluma, but what venue? You know what? I think it's their uh, on-site. I think they have a performance space. Lagunitas does a lot of like really fun uh, kind of events. Uh, I, I was hooking up with Chris Haney, the guy that... Uh, one of the guys that works uh, Dad's, you know, right. that, that sandwich shop. There's like three or four locations in Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a funky, cool little place. Um, he's hooked in with Lagunitas, of course, uh, because they serve the beer. And he was telling me about all, they do all kinds of cool stuff. They have a circus that travels. They, you know. Uh, do you ever play in, in uh, Davis? Have you played in Davis? We play, you know, it's always hard to kind of uh, figuring out where, where to play, especially with the bigger band. The Hot Mess, though, should definitely play. Yeah, you've got Davis. two or three venues around here that yeah. would love to have you. I've played at the Bistro 33 a lot, solo, back in the day. It's oh, been a couple of years. okay, but, yeah, yeah, then, okay. But not, I'm trying to think, not, not anywhere. I was supposed to play at Wonder Bar right when yeah. I found out that my vocal cords had ruptured. Yeah, t talk a little so, bit about that. So you went, and, and did you have to have an operation? No, thank God. Uh, I went... Not yet. I mean, as of yet. So this was over the summer. I started noticing, um, you know, I started noticing problem, problems with my voice in between the lower part and the higher part. And it was, uh, I mean, at points it sounded like Chewbacca going through puberty. It was just <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know, and um, I finally, usually, I, you know, I get a little tired out because my schedule is so hectic. But after a while, I was like, this isn't getting any better. Right. Went to UC Davis, got my throat scoped, and um, they said I'd ruptured 
the blood vessels in my vocal cords, no vocal nodes, which would be a lot more serious, but um, they were talking about me taking three months off and I took like maybe a month, I think. Okay. Um, and I'm, so I'm trying, I'm just working with the vocal coach now to try and strengthen that. You know, what's funny though, is I put a picture of the inside of my throat on Facebook. Right. Uh, it was the, from the scoping and right. it was just a still image that was on the screen and I got flagged for porn. Oh, really? I got flagged oh, for Lord. inappropriate content because my throat was too sexy. Mm. <laughs> my throat's nasty. So they, uh, uh, Facebook? Somebody tagged it was like, this is inappropriate. Oh, Lord. I mean, it, it looks freaky, but, you yeah, know, yeah. Not, I got kids, man. I'm not did you, uh, before you had your problems, did you ever have any voice lessons? You know, no. Um, I did. I remember back in the Sweet Vine days, you know, I was trying to kind of exp expand on my range or, or whatever. And I, I think I went two or three times to this one guy who was really helpful. But this vocal coach actually is is giving me a lot of really good stuff that's going to help with just the strength. That's that's the kind of vocal lessons I need. Okay, I'm strength. already doing the wrong things right now. I'm talking too loud. And yeah, I'm, yeah. Talking too much. Yeah. And I keep asking questions. And yeah. I'm gonna, before we end here, we're going to ask you to sing one more time. So, yeah, it just <laughs> keeps horror. on going. Just keeps on going. Uh, when, I use this. When you, yes. Throaties. Throaties. Throaties from the Sacramento Co-op. <laughs> Our own Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op. This has aloe vera and uh, ginger and all kinds of stuff in it. it usually, oh, I notice okay. it helps. And uh, honey, when, local when honey. you, uh, I, I'm assuming when you were with uh, Sony and uh, that you toured, mm -hmm. uh, did you ever get to a point where every night you're singing, you say, "Wait a minute, it's it, it's affecting things." Yeah, I didn't know any better at the time, though. My method at the time for for clearing what I thought was on my vocal cords was to drink hot sauce. Because oh lord, that's good for your vocal cords, acids really? and heat. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm kind of a fan of the spicier foods. So, but as a performer now, let's just say you keep doing this year after year, which a lot of musicians are doing. How do they? Uh, I, I guess they have coaches to train their vocal cords. Yeah, you know what? You reach a certain point. I think, and it's not just age, but I think. Um, you know, the guy that I'm, that I'm working with, Eric Steele, the doctor, yeah. um, is, uh, he was telling me, you know, it's, it's like you're a high performance athlete. You know, I was watching this video of the repair work they did on Steven Tyler's voice from Aerosmith. Right. And the doctor gauged how many collisions, because you know, your cords are like these little, you right. know, little flesh folds that just kind of go like this. Right. And um, they said during a normal concert, his cords are colliding 87,000 times, Holy over 87,000 times. So, you know, you get that impact happening yeah. constantly. And I've just, I'm going to be learning from this guy how to really, I have to consciously make life changes yeah. and talk differently, uh, do these exercises. Yeah. And so to just switch gears a little bit, more. what, uh, who in today's music scene do you admire? Uh, Hozier. A guy Hozier. named Hozier, who I think is from H-O-Z-I-E-R. He's going to be at Ace of Spades uh, February 20th, I think. I've okay. already got tickets. And, um, and why is he special? Oh, dude. His, you want to talk about a spiritual side. His is a much more darkly spiritual side. Okay. Uh, kind of more of a pagan spirituality, but uh, judging by the lyrics. But um, his voice and his lyrics are just... Really? Yeah, they kind of take my breath away. They make me just... I could go that way just a little bit, maybe, for Hozier. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know, the guys. He's got the man bun going on too. Yeah. We're all we're all growing our little man buns now. I didn't know that was Who a else? thing until recently. <laughs> Who else? Um, Hozier, uh, a guy named Martin Sexton, although he's been around for quite some time now. I mean, honestly, Bruno Mars for writing hooks, you know, right. uh, and his energy and bringing a little bit of soul back, you know, back right. to the the music. Um, I'm like blanking now. You yeah, know, the that's... California Honey Drops are are somewhat l local ish. Uh, there, I really dig their vibe. They're Stockton, is it? Man, I, I think they're the Bay matter. Area. I think they're more the Bay Area. Okay. But yeah, they're doing a lot of soul kind of. Do you ever do house concerts? I'm way, way into doing house concerts. Really? So What's everybody the out there. What's between a regular concert and a house concert? Oh, there's so many benefits. Um, okay. First of all, what people don't, people that are hosting house concerts need to know is that 
it's not, they're not paying me to play at a party at their house. You right. know what I mean, in the background. It's an actual concert situation. All the host is doing is just setting up their house, maybe maybe some food and drinks if they want, but most people do potluck for yeah. what I've done. Right. Um, I got turned on to house concerts by a girl named Shannon Curtis, who we actually wrote a little book on it that's on okay. iTunes and Amazon. I think it's called No, no Bartender, No Booker, No Bouncer. It <laughs> might not be in that order, but those are the three. Uh, for a person at my stage um, that's doing, I have a band, it's, it's a nine piece band that does really well, but the th financially trying to put together a touring is gonna be tough, Right. Uh, it's even with my other bands. So my options right now are, are solo. You right. know? Um, I went to Seattle last month, or, or in October, last week of October, and did uh, two house concerts and one regular club date. Club date had 20 people there or so. I played, it was a Wednesday night, played two hours, I made 28 bucks. Uh, yeah. The two house concerts, first of all, I made 500 bucks between those two house yeah. concerts from people just donating. It's all donation right, based. Right, right. Um, it's a really intimate gathering. So the people hosting are excited because they're really doing something special. And their friends that come every single time have been really excited to have been a part of the experience because it is something a yeah. little different. Um, for me, I get to relate directly to people that are paying attention to you, to what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if I go play, I love, you know, a lot of the places I play downtown, they're all, the Torch Club is a great club. Uh -huh. um, it's a great club across the board for Sacramento. But, you know, if I'm playing solo acoustic, people are sitting around, they're drinking, they're going to be talking right. to their friends. Of course. That's it. Yeah. That's what, and that's what we do. We all yeah. do it, you know. Uh, size of a house concert, 20, 30 people? It's good to get like a, you know, again, I go back to this book that Shannon wrote, you know, she, she got real specific about certain things about that. And then she said, you know, 20 is like a good kind of me middle number. Um, you know, she had a lot of specifics about kind of how close people should maybe sit right. to you. Right. And, how long? We usually go for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes okay. because yeah. people's attention. I just went and saw uh, Rita Hosking at a house concert who was. Uh, I'm all about 2015 being a lot of house, house okay. concerts. In fact, she booked, she booked an entire summer of house concerts okay. and made 25 grand before taxes. Wow. wow. That's why she wrote the book. Wow. So. Okay. Look, at, we're running low on time here. We're going to okay. ask you to sing one more song. All right. And I'm going to ask you the name of the song. I'm going to do uh, that song, Forget What You Know, that I wrote. Uh, okay. Is that on this? That is not on this. Okay. This will be on the uh, upcoming CD. Um, I'm really glad we're doing this, by the way, because I <laughs> recorded a, a, this along with about four or five other songs uh, and did video at a local studio, and then all the video footage got lost. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm like... So I was hurting. We're, we're, we're going to give you a little treat for Christmas. We'll give you an hour of video yes. here. Huh? See, now I, I look at that experience and I'm like, God, work that out, man. Yeah. God, work that worked out. out. Maybe I'm just drinking the cooler. All right. And the name again? It's called Forget What You Know. And this is for. Can you just tell us just briefly a tidbit about it? Yeah, this is for uh, my cousin, Sean Trank, uh, and anyone okay. going through. Uh, cancer or uh, fighting an illness or just dealing with something that's completely changed the nature of their life, sometimes a miracle can happen and sometimes um, the miracle is just finding peace with where you're at. Perfect. And, and well that, said. That's Thank what this you. is about. It's called Forget What You Know. Hoping, trying to figure it out This world is amazing Even with its pain and sorrow We look for the light in tomorrow Forget what you know Forget what you know Open your heart Give up control, but just let it go. Oh, mm, we're reading, seeking answers, we're needing for human behavior. 
Looking for saviors Love is the only thing that has shown me how to erase These lines that we trace Forget what you know Forget what you know Open your heart Give up control But just let it go Oh Forget what you know Forget what you know Open your heart Give up control Just let it go Oh Cause anyone who's ever lived Has only seen a little bit Of what's behind and what's ahead The universe is bigger than All of our tiny ideas Yet some science can explain Words they cannot hear Just let it go Oh Forget what you know Forget what you know Yeah Fall on your knees Follow your soul Love is letting go Oh We're living Dying Hoping, trying to figure it out This world is amazing You didn't write that. You're too rough and gruff a guy to <laughs> sing such a delicate song. <laughs> My God, that touches you. That gets me emotional. Huh? I got me, it gets me emotional. I was like, I kind of botched Holy a little. little. cow. Okay, we're almost done. I want to thank Alex and Sam behind the cameras for uh, uh, helping out today. Peter Boom in the uh, audio booth there, and the director, Una, thank you all for, uh, and then there's a whole group of other people that make all of this possible in Davis, on Davis Community uh, uh, Radio, KDRT 95.7. Hans, thank you. Thank you guys so uh, much for having me. If people are interested in your stuff, just go to hansrocks.com. And thank you for yes. coming. We've really enjoyed it. You're welcome back anytime, sir. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thank, thank you all for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>